I'm Dennis Anderson along with Julie Zenner and here's what's coming up on Almanac North. The St. Louis County Board passed its 2018 budget this week, keeping property tax hikes to a minimum as the county's tax base grows. The UW Extension Office is taking an in-depth look at Superior and Douglas County businesses identifying challenges and opportunities in the local economy. And we'll have the week's business headlines from Business North. Stay where you are. Almanac North is next. Hello and welcome to Almanac North. Thank you very much for watching. This week's show was recorded on Wednesday due to the Christmas holiday weekend. And Julie, a lot of last minute shopping and I'm certain a lot of last minute baking going on. Lots of cooking, lots of shopping and uh, lots of trying to get everything ready for uh, everything to go off without a hitch. It's a busy week, <laughs> isn't it? All right, let's get to our first topic. All right, thanks Denny. Welcome everyone. The St. Louis County Board wasted little time this week approving the 2018 county budget. The board voted unanimously to set the 2018 levy at a 4.45% increase from last year, but due to an increase in the county tax base, homeowners will still see just a tiny increase in the county portion of their property taxes. Joining us to talk about the budget is Keith Nelson, St. Louis County Board member who chairs the Finance Committee, and Patrick Boyle is a board member and chair of the Health and Human Services Committee. And thanks to both of you for being here. Appreciate you. you coming Thank in. Thank you for having me. Commissioner Nelson, uh, relatively good news on the budget. What's driving the growth in the county tax base? Well, I think we've been very, very fortunate to have the kind of growth that we've had over the past year and a year and a half. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that growth is largely b being driven by uh, investments being made by our own by our own folks in their communities and um, small businesses seem, seem to be thriving and and we're very pleased to have uh, a four percent plus growth is is incredible. As mm -hmm. a result was there a lot of give and take this year Keith on the budget or did it come relatively easy? I think um, largely commissioners understand the the issues at hand uh, in our budgeting process. Uh, we're very fortunate to have a, a, a board that's very well versed and uh, I think uh, it it, it came easy to the extent that we didn't see a lot of consternation within the community. Um, I think we had a total of three people at our truth and taxation that was hearings, it. <laughs> both north and south. Wow. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Boyle, the county budget is close to about $400 million, getting close to that. 398. Uh, where, where does the bulk of the money go for people who don't pay that close attention to how that pie is split up? A majority of it goes to health and human services, about 33%, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and public safety is about 31%. So a majority of it there, transportation is in there. So between all, that's, uh, that's the majority of it. Patrick, what's causing that? Why does m much of it, most of it, go to the health and human services? Well, I, I think what you see now, Denny, is a priority that uh, the county has set, not only dealing with mental health, but uh, also with opiate heroin addiction that's going across the nation. Uh, and what we've seen and what, we've, what we're trying to do this year is work our, with our partnership. We knew we can't tackle this problem by ourselves. We needed our local governments, our cities across St. Louis County to work with us along with our nonprofits. Uh, we invested money in, uh, in the help of the opiate crisis uh, along with getting a really good competitive federal grant. Uh, right now we have a stool and we have three legs to that stool. One's enforcement. We're really going to go after those folks that are selling uh, these dangerous drugs. Uh, two is education, prevention, to make sure we do that. And the third and biggest priority we made uh, is treatment this year. Uh, where we have someone, for instance, that ODs on the street, we get them the medical help they need, get them into detox uh, at the Center of Drug and Alcohol, uh, then get them into either inpatient, outpatient treatment, and then get them back to their families. Our number one goal that we see and we have the last few years is out of home placement, kids going into foster care. We just found out this year we have just under 800 kids in foster care 
forty percent of those are due to opiate heroin. Mm -hmm. Is that up or down? The number of kids. We've in the uh, it, it's been escalating, but this last year we we said it. It's been about uh, even from. Mm -hmm. 2016, which is good. Mm -hmm. It's a big barometer for us. Mm -hmm. Are you finding that making investments in um, the opioid and heroin problem, trying to address that, is it making a difference, or, or are you hearing that more money, more money, more money needs to be directed? I, I think I think the board is making some very strategic mm -hmm. investments uh, into the impacts of the opioid uh, crisis mm -hmm. here in St. Louis County. Um, obviously, we have. We have some very, very good people. Uh, Linnea Mersh, our director of public health, and uh, and of course uh, our chair, uh, Commissioner Boyle, on on the health and human services, um, strategic investments, trying to target um, that those areas that most affect um, our community. You did mm -hmm. hire more social workers. Can you give us an idea of how many? We we actually have added about ten social workers a year for the last five years. Um, and and for varying roles within St. Louis County and within social services, mm -hmm. um, but but some of them have been mandated from the state and federal government. Some of them just to meet the needs of this community. Uh, it's certainly not something that that the board wants to do is add is add bodies to that. But the the fact that it's so necessary has been very apparent to the board. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Boyle, how are those uh, individuals being targeted to really address the county needs in I, health and human services? I think especially with this opiate uh, addiction, mm -hmm. it, it, what, what's so uh, unusual about it, it un uncharacteristic of the drug, is that it hits all socioeconomic uh, classes the same, hits males and females the same. So what we're seeing is that these parents, when they're, they are that addicted, they're, <clears throat> they cannot take care of their kids at all. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, it's a bullseye on their backs and uh, what we're trying to do is get ahead of the curve, get our social workers involved at an earlier stage uh, when there's reports come in from our schools, uh, get involved with those parents, get them the help they need mm -hmm. so we don't have to pull their kids. That's the worst thing we want to do is pull a kid from a home. Mm -hmm. The county board is also saying that there's some infrastructure needs in the county. Uh, I think of Virginia, the community of Cook as well, Northland office building. What's going on with that now? We are, uh, we will be bonding, uh, or the proposal is to bond. Of course, we have a public hearing ahead of that uh, in January. We have a very busy first quarter. Uh, we're going to be bonding uh, for that building. Um, the GSC North, Government Service Center North, uh, will be replacing the, what is the old Northland building. Um, and we're, we're really, uh, that's a long time overdue, mm -hmm. okay? It's the last building on our, on our full initiative from over 12 years ago. Uh, the Cook site uh, is a public works facility that'll be a joint facility with the state of Minnesota and the city of Cook. It matches a model that we've used very, very successfully here in Pike Lake, Hibbing, Ely. Um, this will be the fourth mm -hmm. in, in that series. Um, and that investment is to consolidate a number of facilities that, quite frankly, have outlived their useful lives. Um, our, our, our new trucks and graders do not fit in the old buildings. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, uh, it's a couple of strategic investments. These, these likely are going to be the last two major bonding proposals mm -hmm. that St. Louis County will see in the next 20 years. In mm -hmm. a perfect scenario, how soon do you hope to take down the Northland office building? Um, if, if I had uh, a perfect world, uh, our intent is to be able to bond and start building this spring. Mm. Uh, we're anticipating that construction to take somewhere between 10 and 12 months um, before completion. Uh, then of course we have the transition of getting all of our offices from the old building across the street to the new building. Um, and so as far as demolition or, or deconstruction of the Northland building as it sits today, yeah probably 15 to 18 months out at this point. Mm -hmm. Is that the building the Aero Shirt Factory was in many years ago? It is the building that my mother <laughs> worked in for a and number of years. That was a hippodrome before that. It was, it was actually an ice rink. It was a, a recreational center, um, but the yes, for, old. for many, many- <laughs> Older than me. <laughs> for many, many, many years, it was the home of Clute Peabody, mm -hmm. which was the uh, shirt Aero, factory, Aero as shirt it was factory, called, yeah. or Arrow yeah. Shirt Factory. Yeah. What are you looking at for the upcoming year in terms of investment in infrastructure such as roads and bridges, and even technology? Uh, we've been fortunate, you know, uh, I was part of the board when we went for that half cent sales tax mm -hmm. uh, a few years back, and uh, you know, 3,000 miles of roads, 600 bridges, 
we're working on them. Uh, we have a 20-year plan in place, and we continue to move forward. Whether it's up in Ely or you know Forest Street in uh, Duluth, we're working on it. Uh, you know, we we got. Uh, I talked to some folks in the nation, and we say we got. Uh, we're bigger than some states, uh, infrastructure-wise. Uh, so you know, we want to make sure we get kids safe to school on the buses. Make sure folks can get to work back and forth. Uh, it's an investment we have to make and continue to go forward on it. Mm -hmm. We've we've actually spent uh, invested in transportation needs in the last five years over three hundred million dollars wow. in roads and bridges mm -hmm. in St. Louis County. So it's an incredible investment. And with our project labor agreements in place, all of those jobs, all of those jobs are being being performed by our local tradesmen and women. I want to say that the, the bonding rating of the double A plus that St. Louis County has, uh, we've taken uh, advantage of that with extremely low interest rates uh, over the last few years. Uh, it's something we're really proud about of having a, a very healthy budget in St. Louis County. Mm -hmm. Commissioner, you mentioned that public safety was also about a third of the budget. What are the priorities in that area this year as you as you look ahead? It's uh, it's ongoing. You know, we work with uh, Sheriff Lippman mm -hmm. uh, uh, hand in hand uh, and focus on his needs. Mm -hmm. uh, he's kind of a barometer that, that comes back to the county board. We have a very good working relationship with him. Uh, it's infrastructure. Uh, it's making sure that we have enough uh, sheriffs on the street. Uh, it's it's ongoing, but he's usually our one that we really take a barometer off of, and we've had a really good working relationship with him. Mm -hmm. What's really driving the the tax base to to be growing at, at such a, a good clip these days? Uh, again, I, we 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 have been very fortunate in seeing a number of investment uh, mm -hmm. investments being made in St. Louis County, um, small business wise, and and. Um, there, there seems to be a great deal of enthusiasm uh, throughout the area for what could be future mining projects and, their, and the impact that they would have. Mm -hmm. um, so we're seeing, you know, chain stores moving into our communities up north, which we haven't seen for a number of years. Uh, that, that's a good, good mm -hmm. sign. Keith, mm -hmm. talk to us about the Campus Squagama project. Um, you want to touch near and dear to my heart, <laughs> um, but uh, Campus Squagama just, just achieved uh, the American Camping Association designation. Uh, the St. Louis County Board, led by all commissioners, has made a tremendous investment up there, and that investment is in the kids of St. Louis County. It is an incredibly affordable camp. We don't turn anyone away. The county owns the camp? The county owns the camp and has since the 30s. Um, but it is the investment we've made up there, the management that we have up there. Um, again, this is, this is the camp for all of our kids. And again, um, so affordable, so much fun. Uh, what an experience for our youth. Mm -hmm. we were, we're real fortunate to have a, a program through social, for human social services yeah. of a respite for our kids in foster care that any of our kids can go to that camp and give them a nice experience where they're having a tough time. Is that a camp then that's run all summer long? It is, and in fact, we're, we're, we're expanding the utilization of that camp to really meet about nine months out of the year. Um, we have groups coming up there. Uh, the Denfeld Ski Team is coming up there uh, next week to uh, stay while they work out up uh, at Giants Ridge. And so the camp is being used an awful lot more than it ever was. That re is reflective of the investment we put in there, making it something that we could mm -hmm. keep heated and, and, mm -hmm. and use year-round. It's a beautiful setting. It is. Commissioner, you mentioned that uh, small businesses are doing well and new businesses are, are thinking about coming into the region. Um, you have a, an economic development team that's starting to look at uh, where where you should be focusing? Any, you know, the any county's clues? role in economic development mm -hmm. is really to provide the infrastructure necessary yeah. to support that development. Yeah. There's a number of entities that do economic development. That's not really our, that's not really our role as much as, you know, making sure that if, if, a, if an entity is coming into St. Louis County, that, that they have the roads necessary, that they have the water and sewer and the things necessary to make them um, come here and, and want to be here. Um, again, other entities, the IRRRB, uh, many of the cities have economic development arms. Ours is more of a support role, but we're certainly one of the biggest support uh, providers uh, in, the, in the entire area. Biggest economic issue facing the Iron Range right now? Uh, the biggest economic issue facing the Iron Range is stability within all mining aspects. 
always has been, always will be. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thanks for the time you all put into uh, putting the budget together and for taking some time out of this busy holiday season to come and talk to us about it. Thank you. Appreciate Merry it. Christmas, Merry Christmas, everyone. Christmas to Christmas both of you. you. Thank you. Too. Merry Christmas. Sure. Back in 2016, the closing of two big box retailers spurred community-wide concern about the health of retail businesses in Superior and Douglas County. Well, at the request of the Development Association, UW Extension and Superior researched local retail and service businesses. An initial draft report of that research has outlined the challenges and the opportunities for the economy in Douglas County. And so joining us now is James Anderson, he is the Community and Economic Development Educator with UW Extension in Douglas County. James, welcome. If you could tell us, please, what are some of the early findings of the research that's been ongoing? Thanks for inviting me. Absolutely. We actually have had a two-phase process in 2017. We began this spring conducting some primary research, working with the Development Association and Extension to go find businesses uh, that were tracking their customers, customer transactions with uh, where that customer was from. And uh, that first phase of the research really helped us to identify uh, that superior as a market area is greater than our citizens, that we actually achieve a lot of our sales to Minnesota residents. And we believe one of the drivers for that is a large amount of work, workplace commuters that we have coming across both of the bridges to come and work in Superior. Was this surprising to you or did you expect these results? I think the locals uh, were expecting those results, but the challenge is when you're uh, speaking with an economic development prospect, they want to see data backing up uh, those, those thoughts that we kind of know uh, are just kind of true uh, based on our daily transactions. Mm -hmm. Let's back up a little bit to the fact that you did have a couple of those big box retail stores close in the last few years. Is that a, a statement on Superior or is it a statement on just the retail industry itself? I think it's, I think personally, it's more mm -hmm. of a statement on uh, the retailing industry. Mm -hmm. Both of the retailers that we lost in Superior in the last uh, about 18 months uh, were retailers uh, that were experiencing extreme stress in their organizations. Uh, Target has made a lot of uh, changes. That was one of the retailers we lost. Mm -hmm. and, and Kmart is just a really uh, struggling retailer, mm -hmm. period, right now. So K Kmart Sears is a group. Mm -hmm. uh, so. They, they had to close somewhere, and Superior uh, was unfortunately on that list. Mm -hmm. What's the impact on a community like Superior when something like that happens? Yeah, you know, when we look at uh, the changes in demographics, downtowns are really becoming uh, more important. Uh, millennials are, are attracted to downtowns. But the one thing that big box stores do is they help keep dollars in a community. So if someone's going to go to a big box store, uh, where else are they going to go on their way to Target or, or Walmart mm -hmm. or, or wherever it may be? Uh, that uh, uh, They're a natural attraction for retail transactions, uh, but when you travel to one, then you're likely to go to other stores mm -hmm. near that one. So, so our concern is if we don't have those attractions, uh, they're coming across the bridge, they're going online, they're going anyplace else, and, and what is the reciprocal impact on the locally owned store? Mm -hmm. We saw mom and pop operations close as a result of big box stores coming in into towns. Uh, is the internet now uh, putting the big box stores in jeopardy? Internet sales? Uh, you see some big boxes really transitioning. You see Walmart moving to, to more online transactions. You see Best Buy moving to online transactions. They're trying to adjust. Yes, and, and, and also driving those online transactions to bring the customer into the store. But we're also seeing a lot of smaller businesses do uh, internet transactions to supplement their sales. So the smaller stores are finally finding a way uh, to use the internet as a tool to help drive their sales as well. Mm -hmm. I understand your research also looked at, at clusters and which ones are, are doing really well and starting to grow? Which ones may be a, a, 
a little more unstable or, or, or need a little bit of a boost. Talk about those areas of strength and weaknesses when you look at the sectors in the community. You bet. That was our second phase of our research, mm -hmm. and uh, that was uh, using secondary data, mm -hmm. primarily taking a look at sales tax data. The one thing that uh, we have in Wisconsin, very similar to uh, parts of Minnesota, is uh, some of our counties collect a local half a percent sales tax to help fund county government. In Wisconsin, 62 of 72 counties do that, and the sales tax transactions are, are categorized by cluster. And we were able to dive into that information and take a look at what clusters were performing well and which cluster, clusters are declining. In addition, uh, we were able to take a look at that data longitudinally to see what the patterns are. And uh, what we've done in the second round of our research is to compare sales by cluster in 2005 and 2016 to identify clusters that are growing and those that are declining. Yeah, what, kind, what, what clusters are growing and showing some strength right now? The ones that are, are growing and showing a strength are uh, wholesale uh, for merchants, uh, banking, uh, credit intermediation, Professional services and food and beverage are both uh, showing that we have a disproportionate amount of those sales uh, compared to our population and our income, uh, as well as uh, significant growth from 2005 to 2016. Uh, we also have um, uh, some areas that are, are still kind of weak, uh, but they're also growing uh, from 2005 to 16. Uh, rental and leasing services, that could be business to consumer or business to business leasing services. Non-store retailers, and this is kind of a double-edged sword because in here could be uh, those online uh, sales transactions see, sure. or, or sales taxes collected. And surprising to me was sporting goods, um, but we do have some sporting goods stores around the county, even though uh, the majority of our retail and services concentration is within the city of Superior. How are gas stations doing? Uh, gas stations are interesting that uh, uh, they've been a strong performer. They're still a strong performer. We still have sales that exceed what we are predicted to have based on our population and our income in our area, uh, but they've been declining uh, since uh, 2005. Mm -hmm. So it's still a strong sector, but it's a declining sector. And we're trying to figure out why, why, why that is. Is it greater competition from this area? Is it greater competition from Ashland or other areas? People are gassing up before they get to us. But it's interesting that it's still a strong performer, but, but it's uh, declining in the last 10 years. What's the value of having this information and how will it be used? This type of cluster market analysis uh, is, is a pretty straightforward, simple approach to use secondary data to understand your market. And um, a lot of banks will accept this type of research if you have a business that wants to come in uh, to an area and start up a retail or a service uh, business to be able to demonstrate uh, that they'll be able to achieve market share. Uh, it also helps us to really identify what are some businesses that we should be concentrating on, especially ones that we might see that are declining or, or weakening. Mm -hmm. uh, are those saveable? Uh, businesses, what, what educational services, what economic development yeah. services can we offer them to bolster them up and strengthen them? And James, you're the chair of the organizing committee for Superior Days. What do you want to take down to Madison this year? Yeah, we're taking uh, we're taking a look at a variety of legislative and agency issues. Uh, the really big one that uh, came up in the last week, Better City Superior is uh, being uh, revived a little bit. Uh, Bruce Thompson, uh, the head of, M of uh, NBC Bank, uh, the pre community banking president and Better City Superior head, uh, thinks that he's found a GOP sponsor uh, for a bill uh, for enabling legislation to uh, to do that. Uh, so that will be one of our top issues. Uh, we've got 10 issues right now. We're working to narrow those 10 legislative issues down to five, and we'll have that done hopefully by next week or the week after. How effective is it to uh, take a contingent down to Madison? Yeah, you know, I think uh, Politics these days has people just frustrated. There's a different tone to politics. Uh, there, there's not that uh, cordiality that maybe existed 10, 15 years ago, and there's a lot of reasons for that. But you know, just last year, 2017, we found success in two areas. We found uh, we, we lobbied for increased Medicaid uh, uh, reimbursement rates for outpatient care for opioid and other addictions. Uh, Governor Walker just signed uh, that in October, and we also found uh, success in the biennial budget for enhanced 9-11. Uh, both of those are issues that we lobbied for last year and found success this year. So there is success to be had. Mm -hmm. All right, James Anderson, you brought some good information to us. Appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thank you very kindly. Thank you.
Well, let's turn now to the business news from the reporters at Business North. The Federal Reserve Board will allow the owner of National Bank of Commerce to purchase 49 percent of the firm that owns Republic Bank. It was announced on Monday. The Republic shares are being acquired from Michael Pellucci, son of the late Gino Pellucci. The Fed reached its Monday conclusion despite objections submitted by Republic's management. Republic Bank will remain independent and NBC will not have a seat on Republic's board. NBC President and CEO CEO Steve Burgess said the share acquisition was made only for investment reasons. Fairview Range President and CEO Deb Boardman retired this week. She has directed Fairview Range since 2010. Although she never intended to work in healthcare, Boardman spent 36 years in the profession, beginning as a business office manager at a Grand Rapids nursing home. Boardman led several initiatives, including the implementation of an electronic patient record system at Fairview Range. Fairview completed over $16 million in building projects during her time as president. The Tuesday departure of the Beatrix, the last salty to leave the Twin Ports this year as a prelude to the end of the 2017 commercial shipping season. The Beatrix sails out of the Netherlands and carried 12,000 metric tons of spring wheat from the CHS elevator in Superior. That cargo is bound for the United Kingdom. Interlake shipping will continue until mid-January when the Sioux locks will close for the season. Port officials say it was an excellent year for Duluth Superior with iron ore shipments up 35% through November. For more on these and other stories, visit businessnorth.com. And so if you have a comment on our show, call now, dial 218-788-2849 to leave a message. You can also send an email to almanacnorth at wdse.org and visit the WDSE website for updates on our broadcast schedule, the latest on your favorite local shows and special events here at the station. Well, Julie, it looks like brutally cold weather is going to be here just in time for the Christmas weekend, so bundle up <laughs> if you're traveling. Especially uh, those who are coming to visit from out of town. I've got some from the Deep South coming. So, Ooh, uh, they're going to find yourself. this interesting. <laughs> All right. Well, for Julie and the crew here at WDSC, I'm Dennis Anderson. Merry Christmas to all of you and be kind.